Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Kingsticks and welcome to my Season 7 Cho'Gath Jungle Commentary Guide. Cho'Gath Jungle is a lot stronger than people give him credit for. I really do think Cho'Gath has a lot of potential. And he actually has pretty solid clears in the jungle. Pretty quick, he has high HP. Starting it off in the jungle, you're always going to want to get a leash from your bot lane. I like to start Talisman, Refillable Potion, since you have so much sustain. Overall, you can get away with taking refillable potions still have fairly high HP in the jungle. You do want to get the leash from your bot lane for the faster clear, especially if the enemy team has a counter jungler. That way they don't take too much of your jungle or any of your jungle at all because you'll be on the other side taking your jungle. As you saw, I start with my E, then I take my Q, then my W. Whenever you're doing your camps, try to line yourself up on it so that you're hitting everything in the camp. Like what you saw with those raptors, I was auto attacking, make sure, making sure I was hitting everything in it. I'm going to go ahead and take my red buff. After you have all three spells and you have your red buff, you can go ahead and head for a gank. Here Yasuo is pretty free. I see him coming down to ward. So now he feels safe in his mind since he warded the bush. But now I'm just going to come up behind him. And now we're going to fuck him. I'm going to throw out my Q. He ends up getting knocked up. He should have just respected my Q and flashed past it and ran away. But now he's picked the poor choice and he, now he's having to run the long way around. I'm just going to cut him off over here. I'm keeping an eye on Talia as well. Land the, I didn't land the Q but I do land my W so he couldn't dash through me in just a simple auto attack. Talia does come down, lays some solid damage on me, ignites. And I can just throw off my Q from distance and knock her up. I am going to sit by the wall though to make sure I don't die. Just going to play it safe and recall. On your first back, you typically don't want to back before you can get your jungle item. Cho'Gath can choose from all three jungle items. He can go for the Saber, he can go for the Stalker, or the Tracker's Knife. If you're going to be doing a lot of ganking, go for the Poachers. That way you can just run up to them, slow them, then drop your Q on them and kill them. If you feel like you're going to be doing more jungling, go for the Tracker's Knife. That way you can lay wards down for your lanes and play it safe. Or if you feel like you're going to be doing a lot of 1 versus 1 or 2 versus 2, you can go ahead and go for the Saber. It'll make you take a lot less damage from the person who you smite and it'll also give you some damage as well. Cho'Gath has a lot of CC but it can be somewhat difficult to land early game. If the enemy has their flash up and if you get up close on them, use your W and then knock them up. That way they'll be silenced and they can't run away. In this case, Leona does have CC, so she goes in for it, but then they'll cause just flashes out. So I'm just going to back off, do my jungle camps. There's no reason to stay and force anything. We already got his flash. I can come back if I like, and then we can work off of that since we know he doesn't have it anymore. But in general, whenever you're playing Cho'Gath, try to go to lanes that have CC. That way, if your laner lands their CC, then you can easily land your Q, auto attack, auto attack, then W. I'm going to come top again since Yasuo is pushed and Riven has a lot of damage. I'm just going to run up to him. I'm not using my Q yet. I'm going to get into auto attack range, silence him. I'm still holding on to my Q. I throw it down, but we kill him before it can be used. If you guys are wondering what spells I took in the jungle for clear, I start with my E, then I take my Q, then W. At that point, I max my E because my E will give me a lot of clearing potential and damage. After that, you max your W because your W's cooldown gets lower and lower the more you level it. Also, the... Silence increases. If you max your Q, nothing on it increases. The knockup duration doesn't increase, the so slow doesn't increase, and the cooldown on it doesn't increase. It's just the damage. So this is why you're going to be maxing your W second. But remember, you're going to be maxing your E first for the massive clears and damage it gives you. Like I mentioned earlier, we know Bell causes flashes down so we can abuse it. I flashed over the wall to close some distance. It was a bit of a waste, but I was trying to play it safe. I throw down my Q a little bit too quick. I smite him. I auto attack him. I accidentally cancel an auto, and then I ultimate him. Unfortunately, Caitlyn did get back before we could leave. Fizz really should have gone for Kate, but we did get the kill on Velka, so it's worth. Since the enemy mid laner and jungler is still alive, it'd be too risky to do dragon. Plus, it's just the stone dragon, which isn't really worth it because it's not going to give us a big power spike right now. It's more of a late game kind of thing, unless your teammates are good and understand the concept of pushing turrets. I am fairly fed on kills and farm at this point, so I'm just going to go back up top for another easy gank against Yasuo. He happens to already be in the river, so I'm just going to chase him for a bit. I'm going to miss my Q, just start auto attacking him with my red buff and my E's on him. I smite him. He's taking loads of damage. Talia does end up coming, so I'm just having to run away and separate myself on her ult. Yasuo foolishly chases, thinking his teammates could follow up, and we eat him alive. It was really greedy of Yasuo. It's probably because he's tilted at this point since I've ganked him three times. So far, and it's only been 11 minutes, so he's just doing dumb stuff. Here, I do take Uder's blue buff. I was keeping an eye on him, but I did notice he left, and I should have just left at that point. 
because he was top lane taking minions, but when I saw he left, I should have just left. So Yasuo collapses on me, Udyr kills me, and it was just a bad play overall by my part. I shouldn't have been greedy and just gone back into my jungle. And then unfortunately, Riven does die. I finally have enough money to get my Cinder Hulk. The nice thing about building Cinder Hulk on Tank Cho'Gath is besides the fact that it gives you HP, it gives you a lot of bonus HP based off of your maximum HP, which is very, very cool because your ultimate on Cho'Gath gives you a lot of health for each stack you have. So in that, so once you have a full build you'll pretty much have around 6,000 HP on Cho'Gath and this is a one of the big reasons why I take scaling health per level seals on Cho'Gath is because it works so well with your Cinder Hulk and your ultimate that you really can't go wrong taking scaling health per level. Notice how before I took Dragon I wanted to push mid first get some golden experience also to shove it out and then we can just take Dragon since my ultimate does do over a thousand true damage there's really no way for them to outsmite me, so it's pretty much free, especially since we're so far ahead, we can just take it. As I work my way through my jungle, I am closest to ganking Yasuo. Always keep your out for easy ganks like this. I'm just gonna walk up to him. I'm gonna silence him. Now that he's silenced, I can easily land my Q. I smite, I just keep auto attacking him, and me and Riven pick up another free kill. At this point, Yasuo is very, very tilted, and all me and my team have to do is group up and finish the game. I've been counter jungling Udyr a bit, but I saw Talia was low on HP, so I just came by, flash, silenced, and it is a free kill. Logically, as the jungler, you want to always be jungling unless you see a free kill like that, or it doesn't even have to be that free if the enemy lane is pushed and they're not warded, or if they're pushed and low on HP, or if it's in the middle of the lane and it's not warded. Whenever you feel like if you go, you can at least burn a flash or get a kill, it's worth it. Just you got to manage risk and reward, but it's usually best to just be jungling and whenever you see him then you go out and get him. I see Udyr on the mini map so I just wait in the bush for him. He comes up, I auto attack and knock him up. Me and Riven just start pounding him. I turn on Vel'Koz when I should have just really gone for Yasuo here. Vel'Koz is quite a bit squish here so I turn for him. Riven does end up getting away so I just go on to Vel'Koz, auto attack, auto attack, auto attack. I'm gonna save my ultimate for the Yasuo. I start auto attacking him. I land my silence and then auto attack ultimate. The key is whenever you're in these long prolonged fights with Cho'Gath, you want to get off as many auto attacks as possible. Since you are maxing your E, it's going to do an incredible amount of damage. And yeah, so just weave in your auto attacks in between your spells and you'll be doing incredible amounts of damage. Here, I wait to use my Q till after Leona Lancer ultimate. I land it. Then as they're coming down, I immediately silence. We pick up two quick kills. Then I turn on to the Vel'Koz. I use my Randuin slow, Q, get a double knock up auto attack double silence and I'm just still auto attacking watch how I stay on him and just keep auto attacking the closer you are to them the easier it is to land your Q your W and your ultimate and you can still auto attack so you want to be as close as possible while watching your spacing so here we ace them at this point we should all group mid just push it down get another turret rotate maybe get the rift herald I do come over here and pick up some jungle Right here, I was imagining I was a full AP Cho'Gath and I wanted to one-shot Talia, land the Q, auto attack, silence. Ran doing slow, I'm still auto attacking, and here I realize I'm fucked, so I'm just gonna run, throw down a defensive Q, get a double knockup. Not even a double knockup, a single knockup, but I'm still running. I'm incredibly tanky, I have a massive amount of HP. Just gonna flash. And they're gonna chase us for a bit, but it's actually pretty hard to chase Cho'Gath because if you're chasing him, it's really easy for him to land his Q, so I'm just gonna keep throwing it out. I thought Talia was gonna come on her wall, so I threw out my silence, ready to silence her and kill her, but she doesn't. Luckily, our minis are there right when we need them. Raven does get the kill. I knock up Udyr, and it is all good. Right here, look on the mini map. This is where things get weird. For some reason, Leona is mid pushing by herself. This is strange. And this is the marker to our defeat. The score, they have eight kills and we have 26 kills, but look on the minimap right now. If instead Leona came top, we could get a quick kill on Udyr, push down top lane and get some turrets. Instead, she is mid. I'm not trying to blame this on Leona. I'm just saying this is one of the signs that it's going to be hard for you in the mid and late game because your teammates aren't necessarily willing to group. So right now, I'm just going back in my jungle. I'm farming. There wasn't really an objective to take, but now I see they're all going mid. So me and Vayne are going to take Dragon. Leona does die, so now we pretty much just have to group back up mid and hold turrets. Riven is split pushing, which is kind of strange because we have a super tank jungler and uh, Vayne kind of needs a pillar, but even then, Vayne is bot lane right now. So we have a split lane Riven top and a split lane Vayne bot. 
not surprisingly, they go off to kill our vein bot lane and now they're going to push off our riven top so i'm just in my jungle farming here i do take red buff i probably shouldn't take red buff but vein is dead so i don't really want the enemy team to get it i'm gonna play it safe and just take it this is where it gets worse riven isn't afk but she actually dc she's having internet problems this is allowing Gasso to get back in the game, farm for free, and he does pick up some kill gold. It's very, very bad news. Riven does come back into the game. I'm soloing Yasuo, just auto attack, auto attack. After he's used his dash, I throw down my Q and I just silence him whenever I feel like he's about to Q. So that way he doesn't get to do it and I just keep auto attacking him. He runs away. Melkaz is foolish to try to save him and I am just going to end up turning on him and killing him. Just landing a Q and just auto attacking the crap out of him. Unfortunately, while we're chasing the Velkaz and killing him, Yasuo does get away, but we do pick up the kill. As you can see, three of them are dead now. Vayne and Leona are bot lane. At this point, we should all go mid and push and group together, but Vayne and Leona stay bot, so I go bot to try to pill for Vayne. We do end up killing Yasuo, but Fizz is looks like Fizz is staying mid. And so we're not really grouped. We do need a full group even though we're really far ahead on kills because if we can't pill for Vayne, we can't do much. Luckily, Riven does come down and me and Riven do pick up a kill on Talia because Talia's playing really aggressive. Here, unfortunately, when me and Riven were killing Talia, Vayne was just standing there by herself and she does die. Leona does roam mid, which is strange, and Fizz stayed mid all along. Even though we had a kill on Yasuo, there's really no need for Fizz to stay mid. He could have just came bot and we could have demolished them. As you can see, I still have full HP because people are just simply out of position. Here, I'm in the enemy's jungle waiting for Riven and we're just going to push. For some reason, Vayne is top lane splitting by herself when we didn't know where Yasuo was and she does end up dying. When you are an AD carry, you cannot split push when there is on an Yasuo on the enemy team. He will destroy you. So right now I should have just backed up, but I'm being greedy and I'm just taking an absolute loads of damage. I am going to end up dying here. I waste a flash and as you can see, our team is just very disjointed. Nobody's really willing to group and people are just making very silly mistakes. I do have a Randuins because it's a great item. Since they have double crits on their team, they have a Caitlyn and Yasuo. It's going to give me a lot of resistance against a critical strike, 10% crit resistance. Plus it's giving me the health and armor and the slow which is very nice against their team. I'm just clearing out some of my jungle as we regroup, trying to give my teammates time. Unfortunately, Riven does keep having internet problems which isn't great since we're already having problems grouping anyways. It's just putting us down a man. Fizz catches Yasuo out of position so I just go on to him. I miss my silence because I used it a little bit too early. I should have waited till he dashed but I didn't. We do end up killing him anyways. So now we're just going to push lane. Riven is coming bot with us. Vayne isn't though, which is a big mistake. She should have just ran bot with us and we could have fought them 4v4. Plus Vayne really needs a super tank like Cho'Gath with her. So that way she doesn't get killed by the enemy team. As you can see, she's still pushing mid when we really need her right now. Iz goes in. He trades his life to take Vel'Koz's, which isn't a terrible trade. But right now we don't have an ADC. Riven's low on HP. And I'm just really tanky. I can do decent damage, but I'm more of a CC tank. I can't really burst anybody. I need Vayne. Vayne jumps in dick first into a grinder. Gets absolutely fucked. She lost so, so much HP. And now that we did turn the fight around, she's going to jump face first into death, which was a very strange, poor choice on her part. But it's... Just one of those things. I don't want to blame teammates, but when they do stuff like that, there's not a lot you can do. Just don't be too salty, and hopefully you can win. Here, we should have just backed off after Vayne died. We don't have the proper damage. Leona misses her ult. Well, she doesn't miss it, but she uses it on Belkaz when we really needed it on Yasuo to lock him down and kill him. So we all do end up dying. The enemy team is getting farther and farther back into this game. At this point, I am rushing a Warmogs. I should have gone for a Thornmel, but I didn't realize how fed Yasuo was getting. So Vayne goes into melee range. Yasuo kills her. And now Yasuo can actually kill me, which is kind of silly when you think about it since I'm so fed. But since I don't have a Thornmel, he can just solo me. So that's very, very unfortunate. And now I am actually very salty, which don't be salty, guys. It doesn't do you or your teammates any good for you to be salty. So don't type things in chat like, you guys suck or do you guys want to lose or something like that. It's just not good for the team. I did it here because I was very upset. I should have just 
swallowed the pill and realized that we were probably going to lose and just tried my best. You can rage as much as you want, just don't type it in chat. Because even if you are very upset, typing in chat's going to make you more upset and it's also going to put your teammates on tilt. We do win this encounter, we do end up picking off Yasuo, but I've kind of already tilted myself and my teammates are a little tilted. I make a horrible play, I flash in on Velkaz, which is extremely greedy, not knowing where Tali is. And then I do just end up dying. A horrible play on my part. I take full responsibility for it. We're finally starting to group a little bit. We're starting to group up mid. And Vayne does a decent play and picks off Talia. She takes a lot of damage, but she does get the kill. Fizz isn't actually with us, so it's only four of us. And Yasuo is about to spawn, so it will be a 4v4. And we don't have Fizz. And they're pretty much killing all of our minions, so we really do need to back up. But instead, Leona goes in. Riven goes to try to back her up. And Vayne is kind of just in between. So they both end up dying. And me and Riven are now running, nearly both dead. I am going to come up to the wall, throw out a Q to slow down Udyr. Now Riven's going to be able to get away. But you saw there, it was just... An unnecessary play people didn't necessarily understand their champions and everyone was kind of on tilt but overall Cho'Gath is a massive massive asset to a team he's one of the tankiest jungle champs you can pick he has solid clears insane CC he's got some true damage he's a lot of fun you guys should really give him a try I hope all of you enjoyed this commentary guide unfortunately it was a loss but I hope you all can see the power Cho'Gath has if you have any comments or suggestions leave them down below I'm eager to read them if you want something a little bit different a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that, let me know. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you out there on the road.